So today what we're here talking about is the Florida High Wind Manual. How many of you are familiar with that manual that's in front of you? And everybody's got a manual. Okay, so really only about a third of you have seen it. How many guys are, are roofers? And what I mean by you started your career up roofing, making money by swinging a hammer, spraying foam, and doing... Okay, good, about the same number of guys that have the manual. That is a good correlation. The, the manual's a critical, a critical document here in Florida, and really no matter where you're roofing, the installation instructions for a given product are critical to The challenge with it is that it's a tremendous amount of information, and today this is a manual certification class. Uh, we don't expect you to come in here today a non-roofer and leave being a certified installer. We don't call this a certified installer class. This is a manual certification class, and what we expect you to be able to do when you leave here is to find the information necessary. It doesn't have to be all up here. You, you just have to have the Google roadmap to find it in the manual. So that's why we're giving you the manual and a highlighter. The manual is the most effective tool and we're just gonna try to help you highlight the things that we think will allow the critical points to jump out at you as we go through it. There is a difference in Florida. How many guys started their roofing in Florida? Okay, so again, about a third, some different guys. How many guys started roofing outside of the state? Okay, so you had, you had roofing experience before you came to Florida. And when you came to Florida, did you go, oh my gosh, what are these guys doing here? Because <laughs> uh, it's very different, it's different. Why is it different? Because the biggest challenge you have here in Florida is, is the potential threat of a hurricane. I shouldn't say the biggest challenge, because you get a tremendous amount of rain, uh, but, but the, the, the roofs are built to deal with the threat of severe winds. So whereas in my area, we're looking at earthquakes, and, and the, the loads on the roof, and how that gets transferred down to the foundation, you guys have to worry about the load, but more importantly, you also have to worry about the uplift, because the wind's gonna try to rip the roof off, so we need to get the roof attached to the underlayment, and the underlayment attached to the plywood, and the plywood attached to the rafters, and the trusses, all the way down. So we've got this opposite stress happening on the roof, and we're responsible to a degree all the way down to the decking as a roofing contractor. So normally when we teach a roofing class, or if you go to a roofing class, they start out by saying, make sure the deck's clear, you know, nail on your underlayment. And yet before we can do that in Florida with our tile roof, we have to know where we are. What part is the wind gonna try to rip that roof off? That's gonna determine what we have to do with the underlayment. So we're gonna teach a little bit differently and I want you to know that ahead of time so you can, you can feel it as we go through. We want to keep the roof on and keep the water out. So we're going to start by looking at the tile up here in the upper left corner and looking at the wind tables to see what, what's the force on that tile to try to rip it off. So how do we have to attach it, foam it, screw it, you know, uh, clip it um, to the underlayment, secure it to the underlayment, and how do we have to secure that underlayment to the deck uh, before we get down to where we actually get to start roofing and say now we've got a plan We've got a requirement that we can follow, and then we start putting on the underlayment, putting on the tile, and going back up. So we're going to kind of do a horseshoe rather than rather than starting at the plywood and going up. We're going to we're going to talk also about what the forces are that are going to make you do certain things when when you're fastening that roof. Another critical difference that is important to uh, comprehend and accept when we're dealing with Florida roofing, or especially tile roofing, is that uh, we have an underlayment backup system and we have the tile roof. Uh, if you worked in the remainder of the country, we would say the tile roof is the primary roof covering, that is the roof. In fact, when I started roofing in the late 80s, underlayment wasn't required. We put tile on space deck. If you picked up tile, you were looking at insulation in the attic. And there's still functional roofs out there like that in my area. That sounds crazy maybe to some of you guys, where you get seven inches of rain in 24 hours and we get seven inches of rain in December. Uh, so you, you get a fire hose of rain that would stress that kind of a system. But that's the way, that's the way it is. We've got a, a tile roof system and then we've got our underlayment. Two separate systems, we've got a flashing for each. If you take all the tile off, we've still actually got a watertight system underneath there. And if you take the underlayment out, we still have a watertight tile roof. In Florida, the underlayment serves as a temporary roof covering in some installations. So the, the underlayment goes down and it's there as a temporary roof covering until you install the roof. It's there as a temporary roof covering when the neighbor's asphalt shingles fly off and hit and break your tile. 
you guys don't know what you're doing. Oh. When, 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 when the shingles break your tile, and that, that underlayment is there as a temporary roof covering until uh, you can get up and repair the tile. In other Florida installations, the underlayment is the primary roof covering or it depends on that as part of the primary roof covering and it also depends on the flashing system. So sometimes the underlayment is a backup system. If you're up in Jacksonville and you're putting down you know, one layer of, of dry underlayment, that's a backup system. If you're down here and you're doing a sealed system, self-adhered, fully you know, watertight roof, the flashing details may allow water intentionally to run underneath that roof. And so we know that that backup system is more than that, it's actually part of the primary roof. If you grasp that concept, it'll help you when we get to the uh, flashing matrix, because sometimes we require a roof-to-wall flashing, water hits the stucco, runs out onto the roof on a roof-to-wall flashing, and sometimes we say, nope, you don't need one, uh, just let the water go underneath because you've got a big, beefy underlayment system underneath there. So that's a di another difference in Florida.